Hey guys, Tanner69046 here, and I am here today with a different kind of viewer video that has never been seen before on my channel. This video is essentially called, is a review of the game called Salt. So Salt is, if you've ever seen the game Rising World and Minecraft, it's kind of in between those two. It shares characteristics. It's one of it's an open world sandbox kind of deal game. Um, you don't really build as much on this game, but more of an exploration type of deal. So if you just love exploration, this game is going to be for you. So I'd listen in closely. Um, usually whenever I grade games, like, if I see a game on Steam and I'm interested, I kind of go through three different categories to see if I should purchase the game or not. Graphics, story, and gameplay. Graphics being how the game physically looks. Um, the story is, is this a game where you're going to the library and reading a book? No, no, that, that'd be boring. Or is this a game where you're fighting and killing, exploring, discovering? See, that, that's an exciting game. Um, is there some type of background story to this game? Is there some type of mystery to it? Um, that's what the story aspect would be. And then there's gameplay, and that is, does this game run smoothly? Does it feel smooth? Like, um, are the controls comfortable, or do you, is it just awkward to build, craft, and all that? That, that's another category there. Um, so yeah, um... I have those three categories. But then on early access game games, I add in another category because um, with early access games, they are more based on potential than a developed AAA title game. So this game is also in early access. Um, and this category is going to be development because this game has potential to be something amazing, but do the developers take advantage of this potential? Are they currently taking advantage of this potential? Do they do they want this game to become something? Are they constantly updating it? Like for example, Daisy would get like a three out of ten. Um, that's just an example for this. So overall, I'm going to be doing four categories. That's graphics, story, gameplay, and development. All right, let's jump right in. So for the graphics aspect of this, I gave it a 7 out of 10. This is the lowest score I gave this game, and this is because of a few things. Um, if you see this game, the first thing you're going to say is Tanner, a 7 out of 10, are you kidding me? This game has terrible graphics. But once you dive into this game, literally dive because it's about being on an island and stuff, but we'll get to that. But anyways, once you get into this game, You'll see that the graphics kind of got this feel to it's a comfortable feel. It it feels right. Like in Minecraft, the graphics work perfectly for this game. And the graphics work for this game too. It's got this cozy feel, but yet you're still on an adventure trying to solve things. It's not a horror game. It's it's not a realistic game really either. It's pirates and a twig boat that you take from logs you found. It's it, it's not realistic. The graphics go great with this. The cartoony graphics go great with this. It, it really fits it. And then you say, well, if you think it's that amazing, why don't you give it a 10 out of 10? It's still lackluster in the category here. Um, if you walk around in this game, although the cartoony, cartoony theme that they're going for really does fit the game, um, it needs development. The graphics overall are still pretty crappy. Um... It's something you would see out of an early access game. The game's been out for a year. You'd think the graphics would be improved, but that's just not something they haven't worked on yet, but I'm sure they're going to get to it. But yeah, that's it's one of those categories that needs improvement. And the worst part about the graphics, if you see this, you're probably thinking, Tanner, this is like a 2 out of 10. The pirates that you fight look like inflatable doughboy Lego things that if I had one suggestion, one critical suggestion to give to the makers of this game, it would be to redesign the pirates in this game. That that's basically why this category didn't get any get a very good score, and that's because of the fact that the pirates look like complete crap for this game. They're just so awkward, they stand out. It's, it's, they're not pirates. They don't even look like pirates. They look like it looks like civilian survivors. Look like they belong in a city. They don't. They don't look like pirates. That 
that's my one complaint for this game. But other than that, this game is great. So yeah, graphics, 7 out of 10. Okay, now to move on to the story. The story, I gave a 9 out of 10. This category honestly could have deserved a 10 out of 10, but I give it a 9 out of 10. Basically because this game is open world, yet it still contains a story. Um, Minecraft is going to be compared to a lot whenever you think of sandbox games, and it's going to be compared to in this situation too. Um, in Minecraft, you got this open world, build anything you want, but yet there's still abandoned mine shafts, desert temples, villages, the end, the nether, nether fortresses. You got these things that spawn in, and the story is kind of left up to your imagination on how these things got there, who built these things, where do they come from. The secrets of Minecraft are just so, so deep, and we'll never discover them because that's the point. It's your imagination running wild. Salt takes that to a completely another level. <laughs> You've got all these islands you go to. First of all, you spawn in the game with nothing. You Could you be shipwrecked? How did you get there? You don't know how you got there. And then the first thing you find is a chest with a dead corpse. What? That, what? An explanation, please. No, you don't get one. And then, after this, you discover a pickaxe on the ground. And then you go from island to island exploring, killing animals, killing pirates. And then it's just up to your imagination. And then, that's all I've gotten to so far. And I've probably got ten minutes on the game. After this, there's completely different other secrets that I've read about. I'm not going to spoil those secrets because they're for your purposes for you to purchase this game and go test it out yourself and find out what else is in this story. If you really dig deep, I'm sure you're going to find some interesting things. And the reason I didn't give this a 10 out of 10 is because I don't know what's in front of me. The story, in order to really grade this category accurate, you need to have at least 20 hours in a game, and I do not have 20 hours in a game. If, if Rising World could learn anything from this game, it would be the story. Um, so yeah, that's why I gave this a 9 out of 10. So yeah, um, moving on to the next category is the gameplay. This one also, I may have, I, I could really drop the score one point maybe. But this one is 8 out of 10. And that's because everything runs smoothly. It's great. The idea, the concept, everything is just brilliant. Except you can't pick up items. The inventory is a little wanky. And other than the inventory, sure, it's great. But like I said, the inventory really dropped it two points. And it could have dropped it three points. That's just, just, just the inventory is a little awkward in my opinion. Your opinions may be different. But, you know, that's just my opinion. So, yeah, this one, this category is really short to go over. Because it's just, it's just gameplay. It's just can you move around and do the things you're required to do and you can that's why it gets an 8 out of 10 so next category would be development and I don't know a lot about the development on this game but from the reviews I've read they say that development is the category that knocks this one out of the park they say the development is great I was emailed about the development um, everything I've read that's just development it's always updated it's constantly updated it's great it's great it's amazing development woo so I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10 and that's really important for the future of this game because if you think about it the development is the most important part of any game because if you're at a finished version it can never get better this game will always be able to get better as long as it has that 10 out of 10 development so that's always good is the development and that's really important to me personally is that a game always gets developed like minecraft 1.8 has been going through a lot of nothing lately when it comes to development and localized weather mod which i do let's play on has not been developed at all and those two categories really hurt me when it comes to playing minecraft so for development to get a 10 out of 10 based on all the reviews is just really really important to me so 10 out of 10 for development which is always good so that brings us to the last thing overall it's going to average out to about a 9 out of 10. Um, I combine these categories. I base them on their importance. I say I weight them. I do an average. It's kind of my kind of system opinionated thing. And I give it a 9 out of 10. So should you buy this game? Um, just because I give a game a 9 out of 10 does not mean that you should go out immediately and buy this. A few things when it comes to should you buy this is 
you got to understand this game is number one in early access, so you have to be really patient with the game, report all the bugs. you got to help the community with this game if you do purchase it. And don't expect this game to be flawless. It, it is an early access. That label is a warning label. Number two is, is this your kind of style of game? If you're into like an MMO or something like that, this is not your game. If you're into shooters, this is really isn't your game. This game is all about the exploration, all about the storyline to it, and all about getting immersed into the game and just the feeling of being lost and shipwrecked, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> That's really important aspects of this game. So if you're into those, yes, I would I would try this game out. If you're not into those, I really wouldn't. Um, last thing for this game is an important thing that everyone should listen to is whether this game is for you or not. It's got a demo, a free demo, and you can try this demo out. And if you're if you're liking the feel of the demo, you can purchase the game for fifteen bucks on Steam. If you are not liking the demo, don't buy the game. It's as simple as that. And the good news is, if you like the demo, you can save where you were left off in the demo, buy the game, and continue on from where you left off in the demo. So that's why I just love games with demos. It just really, really makes the game. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my piece on this game. This is my first game review. Leave a comment on how I did. Also, leave a comment on if I should let's play this series. Um, I want to know, would you all enjoy watching this? Would you all enjoy a let's play on it? Go, go on to an adventure, whether it be 5 episodes or 50? Who knows? So yeah, just leave a comment on if I should give this game a shot. You all should give the series a shot if I end up doing a series on it. And yeah, it's, it's going to do it for now. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this Salt Game Review. You can purchase it on Steam or you can go to their official website. I'll leave both in the description. Thank you all very much for watching. Leave a comment on how I did and leave a comment on if I should do a series on this game. Goodbye.